Hi, I'm Angelica from FTC Team 15772 Brady Goats. In this video, I'm going to show you how to program a motor with a joystick for the teleoperated period in blocks programming. So you first want to go to the website shown on your um, phone for the robot and then click blocks at the top. So as you can see, I have already done this step. So the next step is to click this button that says create new op mode. So what that will do is it will create this new program for your robot and you can give it a name. So I'll name it Motor Teleop. So once you've named the program, go ahead and click OK. So this is the blocks programming environment. So you have the Java code on the right, you have the different blocks sections on the left, and you'll have different features at the top like to save the program and put on your robot to be able to run it. So I'll start with showing what the basics of the blocks programming that shows up is after exiting out of these two things. So this first block, this to run op mode, so what that does is when you choose to run the program, it'll run everything inside of this block. So there may be different functions on the outside that will have to be called by this block, but mostly everything will be in here. So after that, you have the put initialization blocks here. So you can put different initialization blocks like to set a servo to a certain position or a sensor to a certain like on or off state or even telemetry. So to show a message or a value on your phone. So that's before you actually start to run the robot program, but once you click the initialize button for that program. After that, you have the call whatever your name is and wait for start. So that's going to be waiting for the program to have the play button pressed on the phone. So that's usually when the match officially starts or when the teleoperated period officially starts in the game. After that, you have this if do block. So that'll run anything inside of this, but only once. So usually how we set up our code is that you'd remove anything in here if you want to do autonomous. But instead, since we are not doing autonomous and we're doing teleoperated period, we will move to the repeat while do. So basically it'll go in a loop as many times as this program's running. So this is what you would use for a teleop. So we're going to put all of our, most of our blocks inside this area to be able to run during the actual program. So the first block you want to do is you want to add maybe a telemetry into initialization, just so you know maybe the state of your robot. So for example, what we might do is we might go to utilities and scroll down to telemetry. So telemetry will be putting these messages onto the phone screen. So you can look down at it and see that maybe something's on or off or a certain value. So you'll first, for this one, maybe use the call telemetry add data with the key and the text. So you can drag that and drop it right underneath put initialization blocks here. So maybe you want to find out the state of your robot. So you might say the key is is the program, is the, sorry, motor teleop program selected. And so since after this, you would have selected the program already because it's in the to run op mode block. So for text, you could say yes. The problem is with telemetry, you might have this block, but if you tried to run this, you wouldn't see anything on the phone. So you need another block to be able to actually output it to the phone. So that's this call telemetry dot update block. So you drag that underneath any of the telemetry you're running. And so what that will do is it will output this to the phone. So after adding the telemetry into the initialization, you can now add the actual motor blocks. So while you're actually running the program, so that'll be down here. So the first block you want to choose is on the left, if you scroll to actuators, you'll see two options. You'll see a DC motor and a servo. So for now, we're going to use a DC motor. So you would have to name your motor, whatever it should be named, that should be on your phone configuration. For now, this motor is called rotation motor. 
So you, there's a few other blocks that you might have to use, so I can show you a few different ones. So the first block could be the set rotation motor direction to reverse. And you can put this right underneath this telemetry because it should be an initialization. So sometimes on the robot, you'll have two motors, one on each side of the robot, and you'll have to reverse almost every time one of the motors to be able to go in the same direction. So that's why I'm going to reverse this motor, even though we have one, just to show you how to reverse a motor. After that, see if I can find it. There it is. So now you have this motor that you called to have the direction changed, but you want to change the power of it to maybe be on or off. So that's the set rotation motor power to is between negative one or one. So you can drag that, and we're going to put it underneath, put loop blocks here. So that'll be, while this is, program is running in a loop, it'll be running this code. Right now, if we ran this program, this motor would be always running at full speed, so one. But maybe you want to change it depending on the joystick value. So if you want to do that, you have to go to gamepad on the left, and so some people might choose to run their motor with a button, but right now we're going to be using the left stick Y on the gamepad one. So you'll have a choice between gamepad one or gamepad two, depending on which controller you're programming this on. And then you can have the left stick or the right joystick, and then X or Y. So one thing I want to note is that for Y, since it's up and down, up will actually be negative one and down will be one. So if you want the robot to maybe go forward and you put it up, the joystick up, it might actually go backwards because of that. So how you can work with around that is you can have the direction reversed or you can add a negative sign here. So for now to show you, I can show you how to do a negative sign. So that's in math. And then that's this negative sign right here. So you might have to do that. It depends on your robot, so you'll have to be able to test it out. So after you add that, what that should do is that it's going to set the motor power to this left stick Y. So depending on how far you push this left joystick up and down, then that'll change the power or the speed of the motor that you've chosen. So that's the basics behind how to actually run the motor. But maybe you want to output onto the phone, so with telemetry, the motor pa power value. So we can do another telemetry for that. So this time, instead of doing key and text like we did before, we are going to do the telemetry key and number and drag that underneath the set rotation motor power to the left stick Y. So what this will do is you'll have a key, like maybe you'll have motor power. So that will tell you what this value is. But for number, that will be the actual motor power. So you'd go to DC motor. From there, you'll see the set rotation motor or whatever your motor is called, the power again. But instead of using the set, you're going to be able to get the value. So you'll see that it has this other end of it. So you should drag this rotation motor dot power to where number is. So it plugs in right there. So now when you run this, it sh you should be able to run the motor, the varying speeds depending on the joystick, and then you'll also be able to see the motor power. And at the start of the program, you should be able to see, is the motor teleoff program selected? Yes. So that's how you should go about doing a basic motor teleoff program with a joystick. I hope you enjoyed learning about how to program a motor for the teleoff rated period. To find out more about our team, please visit the links in the video description. Thank you for watching.